God, we look to you tonight. Above the singing, God, above the music, 
above the songs. Let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honored, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you, Jesus.
Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And with also with In the waters of baptism, Stephen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Sing our entrance in to God be the glory. brothers and sisters. On behalf of Reverend Father Steve Duncan and the rest of the parish clergy, welcome to the Santa Rosa RC Church. And again, on behalf of the parish clergy, I take this opportunity to extend condolences to the family and friends of the late Stephen Almarais. I invite you to please take your seats while Neville reads the eulogy. We are gathered here today 
who celebrated life for my father, Stephen Almaris. Dad was born on the 2nd of January, 1933, in Kaiwal in the ward of San and was the first son of 13 children born to Prince George Amorales and Gibberin Amorales. Dad, also known as Mr. Steve, the Bonnier, Almo, Fireman 440, and to his lady friends, Killer. His, his father, Prince George, was a direct descendant of Venezuelan immigrants to Trinidad. Dad was married to Bernadine Dandrad in 1953 and from that union produced six children and one daughter from a previous relationship. Dad has always been an industrious individual who went about seeking employment at an early age. And after settling in Valencia, he found employment at the Valencia Sawmill, where he was employed for a short period of time. Thereafter, he also found employment at the Brechin Castle Sugar Factory, and it is where he befriended Mr. Norbert Paul and the bond of their friendship lasted for well over 50 years. It seemed as though Dad knew everyone in Trinidad or had a friend in every village. Sometime during 1958, he was, while he was still employed at the sugar factory, he received a letter from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service acknowledging his application to join the service. And there began his career as a fire officer. And over, and over his years of service, he was able to attain a rank of fire substation officer. His career spanned from 1958 to 1982, when he opted to take an early voluntary retirement. Being a person who always aspired to excel and not be satisfied with the current situation, he converted the ground floor of our home to a restaurant and bar. Later, he operated a furniture store for a brief period. Older dad was gainfully employed with the fire services and operating a relatively successful business. His passion was always cultivating crops. And for those of us who can remember, his piece of land in the hills of Valencia dubbed the highway to heaven. On that property was a tireless, on that property and with the tireless effort of his two sons, Winston and Clyde, and of course we cannot forget the person he always referred to as his best son-in-law, Luke Williams. He read bees, grew plantains, pigeon peas, cassava, and dashing, among other crops and fruit trees. His generosity was well known and he was always willing to send a hand of plantain or breadfruit for friends and family. Even in the twilight years of his life, he engaged himself cultivating crops and fruit trees at his home. One of my favorite memories of dad was waiting for him to come home just to get a short drive in his Victor Vauxhall motor car. And I always wondered if he named the vehicle after me. And we, can, we certainly cannot forget the river line. And of course, he had to show off his culinary skills to the delight of his friends, Miss Molly, Zach, Dobby, Philo, Mr. Samson, and many others. But on one occasion, as the story was told, fight break out in the river line. And daddy was never a man to run from a good fight. Bottle and stone pelting, man and woman running back and forth. But somebody, on the other hand, had the good wisdom and fortitude to take the whole pot of wine and run with it. So they had a good fight, but nothing to eat. It seemed like the only thing they could, that could supersede his passion for planting crops was cooking. And for those who knew him well, the man was a boss cook, especially his pony, Jira, Jira Mango, which he would gleefully prepare for his eldest daughter, Cynthia, who resides in the U.S., or his famous kitchery pot. And don't talk about his oil long. Boy, that was manna from him. Dad and his younger brother, whom he gleefully called Guff, always had an ongoing competition on who could kick up better oil down. Of course, Dad always won that competition. Well, according to him, well, now, Goff, I guess you can finally win this, this round. Usually in every family, there's a favorite child that can get away with anything from her parents. And that title was unanimously awarded to his last daughter, Judy. Anything the elder children needed became her responsibility to get from Dad, who, by the way, was always, always known as a no-nonsense man. 
And of course, you, you, you have to use the last page and line in the copybook before you could get another one. But she was able to get that with ease. Dad always referred to his third daughter, Carol, as his little Indian daughter, probably in reference to his ancestral East Indian heritage in the person of his great-grandfather, Babla. Dad made no excuses for, for which of his grandchildren he liked or disliked. So a special mention must be made of his grandson and granddaughter, Isaiah, and the late Ashley Williams. Isaiah was the one he said resembled him when he was a young man in one of his old photos. And as fate would have it, he was the only one to follow in his footsteps by joining the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Services. And in closing, a special mention must be made of his stepdaughter, Michelle Benjamin, for her personal care and devotion to his well-being over the years prior to his demise. And a salutation must be made of his sisters, Barbara Belcon and Monica Charles, who also stood by his side during the last few years and also the weeks prior to his passing. I'd also like to make a mention of his grandson, Israel Elijah Angaralis, um, who he was especially proud of for his accomplishments in the field of medicine. Miss Judith Dyer, who resides in California, and Miss Grace. Thank you. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. My loving brother Steve, I am his last sister Monica and we were very close. He played a role of father, but I often objected. We found a happy medium with his care and advice. He had a special love for his sisters, and we loved being together on special occasions, birthdays and Christmas. He would often share his garden fruit with us. He was a benefactor in the community of the Roman Catholic Church in Valencia, and his contribution was always forthcoming in any project that was started. For God so loved the world, John 10.10, 10. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I came to stay with Michel. He was very happy to have his own nurse sister. I gave him tender, loving care. He was also given spiritual and soul preparation on his journey to God. He had victory in the name of Jesus. Michelle lived with him and cared for him tenderly. She often called him her papi. Tanel and her, her daughter Zamora will miss him dearly. Go with God. We, we love you. Barbara and Yvonne, his loving sisters, who check on him often and would spend time with him. Baba would bake cake, bread, and nice pastels for him, which he will enjoy. And they had happy memories together. Love and blessing on your way, brother. Mark and Joan, close friends is in the neighborhood, they enjoyed happy times with him. Love you, Steve. God, go with God. Amen. Thank you.
Please stand. Man of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who, by dying on the cross, has freed us from eternal death, and by rising, has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our brother that he may share in Christ's victory. And let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Almighty God and the Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Stephen, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the reading. from his presence. A thousand thousand waited on him. Ten thousand, ten thousand stood before him. A court was held and the books were opened and I gazed into the vision of the night. I saw coming from the clouds of heaven one like a son of man. He came to the one of great age and was led into his presence. On him was conferred sovereignty, glory, and kingship. And the man of all peoples, nations, and languages before his servants. His sovereignty is an eternal sovereignty, which shall never pass away, nor will his empire ever be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord.
the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. Christ be praised now. now and forever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming, he said of him, There is an Israelite who deserves the name incapable of deceit. How do you know me? said Nathanael. Before Philip came to call you, said Jesus, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel answered, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus replied, You believe that just because I said I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you most solemnly, you will see heaven laid open and above the Son of Man, the angels of God ascending and descending. The Gospel of the Lord. Please take your seats. And so again, my brothers and sisters, I offer condolences a while back on behalf of our parish clergy, but on behalf of the people of Valencia, in particular, the worshiping community on a Sunday morning, I offer deepest condolences to you, my friends. And I have to say family because Mr. Stephen was like family to us. He has been there so long. Mr. Stephen, how can I describe him? Father, brother, you were his baby sister. Father, brother, grandfather, neighbor, hero, friend, benefactor. Yes, he was that too. I remember that, well, right now, for those who may not know, our community chapel is due for renovation. And there was Mr. Stephen. Even though all now, well not all now anymore, eh? but all along he has been one we could always depend on for whatever fundraising activity we had. Whatever we were doing, he was one who was waiting there in the background. Could hardly wait to air condition the, the, the arm building, let me get it. But he gone now. So, never I know. Maybe he must leave that for you to do. He laughed, but I serious. Yes, my dears, Mr. Stephen, how should I say? He was a very impressive person. And I remember speaking to his sister, who she said she had come, up, come to see about him in his final days. And coming down to the last hours just before he died, he was there calling on God's mercy and calling on Mother Mary to journey with him. And God, who we know, always hears. He always listens to the, to the plea of his people. God, whose mercy has no end, no depth. This God of ours, he listened because look at it. Nobody planned this, but today we have come here to pay formal farewell to Mr. Stephen. Guess what? It is the feast of the three guardian angels. So there it is. Mr. Stephen, he get Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael to accompany him to the way on. God is good, and he continues to be good. He continues to be merciful to us at all times. My brothers and sisters, 
We are here and we say, that is Stephen there in the coffin. And poor Stephen, he dead he gone. He doesn't know more. But Stephen gone, and that in the coffin there is just the, 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 the mortal casing that, 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 and that was, you know, it carried the real person, the body, the, 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 the soul of Stephen. What we have, so that, that thing that is lying there in the coffin, he can, cannot hear me praising him and saying all of these good things. It was why I was careful to tell never let to carry on a legacy. Who we are talking to right now are the people who are here paying our final respects to Stephen because we are the ones who still have life. We are the ones who can hear. We are the ones who can see. We are the ones who can think about our own situations, can reflect on our lives. And we are the ones who still have the opportunity, if we have not taken it as yet, to say yes to our Father. We, and you know, everybody calls God Father. So we know very well who our Father is. Our Father is God in heaven. This God who loves us so much, this God who we, so, we, we, we just agree manifested his mercy and his grace on Stephen, allowing him the opportunity to have his sister who is a nurse, to have his family around him who care deeply for him, to have a priest come just a few days before he died to give him his last rites. And Stephen, after all, as you know, as remember how long we are going through this, um, this pandemic, churches have been closed, we all have been receiving spiritual communion. Stephen, after all this time, was able to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ on the Saturday evening, just before he died. So God continues to be good, and God continues to show us in all of these little things that he does. Even though sometimes we doubt and we complain, when we think back, we recognize God's actions in our lives at all times. And therefore, it is no accident then that you are here so that you can take part in this final farewell of Stephen. And you can share in all that we are saying. Because now we know that Stephen has gone. That friend, that father, that hero, that benefactor is no longer here for us to turn to. We're going to miss him. When we broke him, we had nobody to go by. When I have to make a whole 150 pastel for Valencia Church, no Mr. Stephen to say, come and use my kitchen. I'm going to miss him. But the thing about it is that he has gone to a greater place. A greater place that awaits each and every one of us. So therefore, let us take heed. Let us understand the reality of our situation. Each and every one of us, <clears throat> we are destined to die. We're born, and from the time we take up that first breath of life, we start to go down. We are destined to die. What we therefore must do is accept this fact and live our lives in such a way that when that time comes, that final hour comes, we can go satisfied like Stephen was. We could go satisfied and, 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 and believe in that Jesus will be telling us, like he told that good thief, this day you'll be with me in paradise. That Jesus looking at us and he's going to say to us when that final time comes, well done, my good and faithful servant. That is the reality, my brothers and sisters, that we should be looking at, we should be facing at this time, knowing of the goodness of God and knowing that opportunities like this come to happen so as to jolt us into taking stock if we ain't take stock yet. 
and if we have already taken stock to help us to remind others and to, to, to help others along the journey of life. Bad things happen, yes. Good things happen too. But regardless of bad things, good things, our destination should always be our final time with God our Father. This God who is our Father, he loves us to notice this, you know. This God who is our Father, he desires nothing more than to have each and every one of us come to know him and to live with him happily ever after. This God who is our Father, he has looked at our plight and he has recognized that on our own we are helpless. But because he is so loving, because he is so full of mercy, this God who is our Father gave us his only begotten Son so that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. This God who is our Father has given us his Son who is full and offers his divine mercy. A mercy that allows us to get as much as we desire. So in his last hours, with his last breath, Stephen was there, pleaded with God's mercy. My brothers and sisters, Jesus told his sister Faustina, if you come looking for mercy, the amount of mercy you come looking for is what you will get. So if he came with his heart full and a big bucket of big water, thousand dollar, thousand gallon water tank, begging for mercy, that is the amount of mercy he get poured in and offered to him. Yes, this God of love, this God of mercy, he offers us such grace. Such grace that even our deepest sin, our darkest, darkest secrets, which we think we don't want nobody to know, he doesn't know already. But he's asking us to repent, give it to him. Give it to him so that he could throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. He could throw it in that place where it is as far as the east is from the west. Because his final goal for each and every one of us is the goal of love. Our destiny is with him. Let us pray for each other. Let us pray that we will take heed. Let us pray that like Stephen, our guardian angels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, they would be with us, journey with us in our final moments, that they would be here to lead us into that paradise that when God our Father calls us, because call us, he will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us please stand for the general intercession. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Stephen, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints. Lord, hear us. For our brother who had the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the family and friends of our brother Stephen, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray the prayer that God our Father invites us to call him Father. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we ask Mary, our mother, to join with us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit at this time. The collection basket will be passed. I ask that you give generously. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our fear well express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again.
when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Stephen in the sure and the certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Stephen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, in a very short while, you're going to see me approaching the coffin and I will be using certain symbols. You will see me bless the, the coffin with water. This water I'm using is holy water and it symbolizes Stephen having been born into new life through the waters of baptism. And in so doing, he became part of the body of Christ. You're going to see me incensing the coffin. Incense symbolizes the dignity of the human body. Having been created as God's wonderful work of art. And remember, it is the house of the Holy Spirit. As the smoke rises, we pray that our prayers for Stephen also rise up to heaven. Finally, you're going to see me making a cross with dust on the coffin. That dust reminds us that having come from dust unto dust, we shall be too. We gather here to commend our brother Stephen to God our Father and to commit his body to the earth. In the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, let us raise our voices in song and offer our prayers for Stephen. Because God has chosen to call our brother Stephen from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. <laughs>
but the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise his body on the last day. Let us please stand and let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the Lord of God and the peace of Jesus Christ bless and console us, and the gentle of our eyes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Stephen Almorales, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of the angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham, and where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. My brothers and sisters, the service is over. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.
Like of every cloud you see Fill your green with sweet tomorrow Never mind what might have been May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet.